Our first speaker uh, up here is uh, Kimberly Knight. Um, coming from a traditional upbringing, Kimberly Melissa Knight uh, was the sixth born to the parents of Ben and Sylvia Weenie. She currently resides in North Battleford studying her first year of ITEP. The challenges she faces in her life directed her to believe in the wellness of every human being. After graduating from Red Echo Associates, she's been facilitating wellness programs in North Battleford and area for two and a half years. She now implements wellness into everything she does, including her studies at ITEP, and she hopes to one day encourage positive change in the education system and in First Nation communities alike. Please welcome to the stage, Kimberly Knight. Where's Kathy? Where did she go? You should have talked to me a year ago when my baby was teething. I didn't sleep for like four months straight. Um, and then I also wanted to talk to you after about maybe getting my hands on some medicines to make me more beautiful. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Um, so as Ryan mentioned, a little bit about my background. <laughs> to, to put it in a nice way that I, I didn't always believe in wellness of people. It was, for me, it was a long, long road. But what helped, what assisted me was the willing, willingness and the passion to, to look within inside myself and to find what needed to be fixed, right? Um, I took their life skills training, <clears throat> Kim Tatusis and Arson Tatusis, and it was, it was life-changing. It was so amazing that I, I speak so highly of them with everybody that I talk to. And I just, I want to acknowledge um, Kim here today. Could you stand up and we could... <laughs> because she's amazing. She's so amazing. I carry many of her teachings as well as my, my mom and my, my father's teachings. Um, and it just made so much sense to look back to my life, starting from when I was a little girl, right? Being intergenerationally traumatized. Um, and, and it was hard to, to realize that what my mom had gone through, what my dad had gone through, right? And... And... Realizing the effects, I guess, and why, why I chose the life that I lived, why I chose to do what I've, I've done. Um, so I've, I've, you know, I had the opportunity to take some life skills courses, um, and, and it just helped me reflect on starting with my elementary years and how I connected to my classes that I take now in ITAP. So when I think about my, you know what, I'm going to walk, I, I can't, Stand here and I, I, yeah. Okay, so we had an assignment to share an experience in high school or elementary first. And the story that always stuck into my mind was that we had an on-reserve school that I went, went to and I, I've gone from grade two to grade five. And I, I left that school being a grade A student, right? So I moved to Saskatoon here. My mom was finishing her degree. And I started school and the teacher personally came and found me and she said, I'm so excited to have you in my class. You know, you're super smart. You have straight A's. I'm so excited. So I, I felt really good going into, you know, an urban, an urban school. <clears throat> I was the only Indian kid in there. And... Within that week of starting school, my experiences and my expectations changed. Um, I reflect now on the expectations of First Nations schools, and I come to the realization that they're not up to par, right, with the provincial curriculum. Uh, so I, I had a bad, a bad experience with that. I, I almost didn't pass my grade. I was in grade six and I almost didn't pass. I, I 
believe now that she pity passed me because <laughs> I was taller too like than all the other kids but I honestly believe that she pity passed me and um, I, I learned from it right I, I could have you know quit school or um, but I learned from it and, and instead of complaining about it right with my daughter going through high school now instead of complaining about it I wanted to be part of the change. Um, so for many years, I always denied that teaching was my vocation. Always denied it. I have a computer technician certificate. I have an electrician certificate. I was a gold star gas jockey at a gas station. Um, so I've, I've had many different experiences, but it didn't fulfill me, right? So, so I applied to ITEP and um, I had to pay double the price for my acceptance letter from Chris. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so, I, and, and this wasn't my first attempt at university. I had two tries. <clears throat> and looking back now, I think, why on earth did they accept me? Right? I, I, I didn't know why. Because of my track record. I had a bad track record with university. So I'm very honored to be standing here and representing the off-campus <clears throat> um, ITEP program in North Battleford. And my philosophy on education is, and I know we've overheard or heard often, be the change that you want to see, but I believe in that. So what I did was I talked to my mom. I offered her tobacco. I talked to my dad. I offered him tobacco. And I, I asked, you know, what can I do as a teacher candidate, as a future teacher candidate graduating from ITEP? What can I do? And... The answer is plain and simple. We're role models, right? For, for many of the children that we see every day in school, and if you think about it now, we as teachers are going to be spending more time with these children than their parents, right? So ITEP is what you make it. You can get, get employed and cruise by doing the bare minimum, or we can listen to the elders, right? We can implement those stories into our everyday curriculum. We can mesh them together, I guess, the Western world and the Nehiwak world. And that's what I stand here today to tell you that it's, it's not hard. We just need to do the legwork. And I really look up to my mom because she, she does a lot of this legwork for TSEC in North Battleford. <clears throat> And one day, I want to be just like her. I do. Um, my sister Pam, she's amazing at what she does. And I think, yeah, let's, let's clap. <laughs> that's, that's what keeps me motivated every day, is knowing that my little kids, you know, I think about when I'm a teacher, how I'm gonna love my, these little kids, right? And treat all these little kids like as if they're my kids. How I would teach them at home. How when we go to Gokum and Musham's house, you know, my, my dad tells stories, traditional stories. And then, my, we, you know, we go visit Gokum and she's cooking and then there's always something to be told, right? Something to be taught. And my kids are so, I, I watch them together. My mom, my dad and my kids and, <clears throat> It's, it's amazing, right? But kids are so impressionable. And that, that's, I think that's my message, is that it's up to us as First Nations teachers to bring that education to the curriculum and to find a way to balance it. And I know we've, like, we've heard it over and over and over again, but it's time that we start walking our talk, right? We can sit here and say it over and over again, but what are we doing about it? Right? Um, I'm kind of a little bit nervous, but I've always wanted to do this. Hey, ho, oh, hey. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ryan, you got that one? <laughs> just kidding. Um, sorry, I gotta go back to my phone here. Oh, one of the most important things for us as teachers as well is self care. Hey, that's gonna keep us on top of our game. If we don't take care of ourselves, and if we turn to 
you know, negative um, outlets, whether it's lateral violence or um, drinking or, you know, getting into drugs or whatever it might be, that we're, we're not taking care of our, our, our four domains, right? Our mental health, our physical health, our spiritual health and our emotional health, that that's important too, is to take care of yourself. And to be honest with yourself, if you need time to, <clears throat> if you need time to unwind or, but do it in a positive way, right? Explore other options. Don't be scared to take care of yourself. I find that First Nations people that we're so, it's not about us, right? It's about everybody else. We take care of everybody else before we take care of ourselves. And that's how we get run down. And that's how, <clears throat> That's how we, we start to lose our passion. So yeah, so just you know, pray every day and, and give thanks and remind yourself of why, why you're doing the job that you do, okay? Okay, hi, hi. Hey, ho, hey.